Hello everyone and this will be the final tutorial or revision video on IGCSE Economics 6.3 this will be on output and growth uh, so let's start it off as usual I got my notes from the IGCSE textbook and the revision book they're really useful so we'll be discussing with regards to output GDP economic growth recession HDI GDP per capita and some living standards so 6.3 so let me start it off with point number one uh, this is an important economic relationship which is the circular flow of income the national output equals national income equals national expenditure and these are the definitions you have to remember and GDP uh, can have different methods of measuring them and each of these uh, is one of them uh, the national output and this is the total value of output of goods and services produced another option could be national income and this is the total amount of income earned by factors of production including entrepreneurs in a macro economy and the last one is national expenditure and it's how much people or organizational organizations pay for all goods and services as I said earlier, GDP can be measured using those methods and uh, GDP is gross domestic product and the definition for that is basically the total value of output produced in an economy. Uh, we can clearly state its output because syllabus statement says uh, with regards to output. So there are two types. Hello everyone and sorry for the interruption. I've realized I made a mistake between real GDP and nominal GDP. So this video will um, make sure you understand. So for example, uh, for the sake of understanding the difference, we have uh, GDP as $1,000 in the first year and $1,200 in the second year. And for products, we only have one product in the economy, and that is uh, oranges. And for example, if oranges are sold $0.5 for each, and in the second year, oranges are sold $0.55. So we can, um, we can calculate the nominal GDP just by the GDP in the first uh, second year over the GDP in the first year times it by 100 as we can clearly see this is a 20% increase in GDP but this is not the economic growth economic growth is the real GDP value so to find the real GDP value it's basically we have to find the quantity so um, the in the first year when the GDP is one thousand dollars and the orange is zero point five dollars so we divide it by uh, um, the price which is two thousand dollars and then uh, GDP divided by price as I calculated earlier is two one eight two so this is the quantity sold and we have to find the uh, the real GDP value note this right here 1200 is the nominal GDP value so the real GDP value is the quantity times it by the first year so basically it's we use the quantity for the second year and we times it by the price for the first year so the price doesn't change at all so the price is always 0 0.5 so in this case uh, prices or inflation um, prices are not taken into account a change in price and it's purely change in quantity sold so basically 0 0.5 times 2182 as we put that in a calculator 2182 this would be 1091 so 1091 this is the value of the real GDP 1091 and as we can clearly see there's only a 9.1 percent increase and this would be the economic growth so I hope you guys can understand the difference between real and nominal GDP
that. So there are three uses of GDP. Number one, uh, government are better informed about the allocation of resources. Uh, poor allocation of resources could result in market failure, and this is topic three. But if it's efficient, it's very good for the economy. Uh, the second one is, uh, and the third one is, comparison of standard rate of rate of living in one year with the next that's the second use and the third use is in different areas of the same country you compare the standard of living in different areas of the same country this is a GDP formula I don't know I don't think it's in the syllabus but it's good to remember this as you can mention it in lots of exam papers where they may ask uh, something about GDP it's basically consumption plus investment plus government spending plus net export which is export minus import I got this from Google Images so on to uh, 6.3.2 which is economic growth and uh, what the definition of economic growth is when there has been an increase in the real GDP of an economy so how do economies grow first of all uh, the discovery of more natural resources second of all investment in new capital and infrastructure third of all uh, technological uh, technical progress uh, like new machines and stuff fourth one is increasing the amount and quality of human resources and the last one is reallocation of resources so basically if an economy grows let me demonstrate using this uh, this is the PPC curve so this keeps doing this thing because I'm recording using using Camtasia and it's only 60 frames per second I think I'm not sure so uh, right here could be consumer uh, goods and this one could be capital goods so basically if there's an increase or there's an economic growth the PP curves PPC curves it expands to the right so instead of one like one point here this would um expand much more so this increases and this increases like that so back to the powerpoint uh, this is the economic cycle and if you do IGCAC business you will be very familiar with this so there's the uh, oh there's no growth go oh, growth should be here so there should be growth boom recession slump and recovery those are the five main points growth is when economy um, well, let me define economic cycle first. It's self-explanatory and it's the patterns of up and down observed in real GDP growth over time. It's important to say over a certain time period, specific time period given. So um, uh, growth is when it's exp uh, the economy is expanding and there's also the boom as we can see right here which is the absolute peak and some uh, economists might call it as it overheats as it's at it at the absolute maximum we, we could link to link this if you do business to the product life cycle where this is the mat maturity or the saturation the absolute peak the most sales and in this case the highest employment the highest sales the everything is the highest and there soon will be a term called recession and we have to uh, recession is meant by um, the demand falling and commonly in exam papers they um, ask about uh, define recession so we have to define it really well so let me just uh, get a past paper and the actual definition um, 2013 summer S13 question paper um 23 I've encountered this and we ha lots of times you have to define recession uh, among the uh, growth boom recession and slump uh, recovery so like here define the term recession so if we get to the mark scheme for this one question six it is you have to remember this to get the uh, full two marks so question six 
this right here. It is where there is a fall in the output of a country as measured by GDP or economic downturn. It is two successive two successive quarters of negative growth. So this is the proper definition of a recession and you will get the full two marks in an exam paper. So you got to remember this. It might appear, it might not, but it's just good to remember. Okay, so that's the um, economic cycle. So we'll get to economic growth versus economic welfare. So um, if you, if a econo if an economy has economic growth, it might not necessarily have economic welfare. So economic growth is pretty much self-explanatory in the previous diagram. It's when goods and service increases, employment opportunities increase, sales and profit increase, low and stable inflation, the, the PPC curve to the right. So economic welfare, um, it bas basically measures um, the quality of life or the standard rate of living. So um, to measure welfare, there's lots of different things. One of the things could be GDP per capita. This is when um, we measure the average income per person. And this is a much more viable option than GDP. This is because it takes the population into account, not just the country's total output. However, um, it doesn't really take into account the redistribution of income. This could be because like 1% of the country is all rich people and the other 99% are all um, poor so the average GDP per capita is still solid or medium but that's actually this is um, a negative side of GDP per capita and we have another measure of value which we will introduce later called the HDI and another disadvantage is no account on the impact of growth on the environment um, so GDP what's not included in GDP first of all is the intermediate products and this is meant by products used to make other products already counted in the GDP second of all is the underground economy so basically no record exists of transactions it could be um, babysitters maids and uh, private tutors and so on and the last one is the sale of used goods and this is when the goods are second-handed so the problems with GDP first of all it doesn't measure happiness second of all as I said earlier the distribution of income it's uneven and last of all is um, the negative byproducts attributed to increased production uh, which could be pollution or traffic so uh, as we can see earlier there's lots of problems with GDP um, however, there's the Human Development Index, HDI, which is used by the United Nations to make comparisons of human and economic development in different countries. So there are three different measures. Uh, it's uh, basically the standard rate of living. Hold on, let me go to paint. So it's basically the standard rate of living plus the education plus health and you're gonna divide it by three and you will get a score of zero to one if you find that complicated just t times it by um, 100 so to find a percentage score basically just think the zero to one as a decimal so basically Norway is like top with 0 0.94 think of it as 94 percent in the test or they're really high so basically it's zero to one that's how they're measured in uh, if it's there's they will be classified into very high high medium and low HDI so um, three different measures uh, standard rate of living as I said earlier this could be um, the GDP per capita <coughs> so and it um, yeah G GDP per capita um, there's also education which um, includes the adult literacy rate and the school and college enrollment and how long they stay in certain schools like some countries implement a system where they have to stay uh, 18 until 18 years old then they can get a job that's education uh, and the uh, third one is health and life expen expectancy and uh, pr uh, problem I mean um, some elements that could relate to this are poor sanitation, child maturation, and lack of health care. 
Thank you for watching guys and hopefully this has covered all of 6.3 output and growth and hopefully the three um, videos are good enough for you to get that A star. Thank you for watching.